Lit by eerily beautiful moonlight, the Pokémon await their trainer's orders. The stage is set and the curtain is up. The red corner makes the first attack. A smashing blow. A fierce blow. It's a direct hit. The situation is a bit of a stalemate. It's a mental tug of war as they anticipate each other's move.
Alrighty. It's time for some commentary here on the Twitch Place Pokemon. I'm the Youngest 2, and joining me is. Should be Liquor Bomb 12. Oh well. Season in somewhere yet yeah, unas unspecified. That's a really good time marker. Right. <laughs> I just got here. Sorry about that. There we are. I'm here, I'm here. So what do we have going on here? We got some token matches. We got did you did you already read off the hints? Did we figure it out? Not yet, I haven't even figured it out yet. I'm guessing the chat has already figured that out. Alright. So, yes, I'm sorry I was late, guys. Nidoran! It was Nidoran female. Hey, everybody! Whoa, too much! Meanwhile, in a sad game, we defeated someone, and we got one token in the pot right now. Just one token. We often see more added when we're in commentary, so uh, keep your eyes open for that. Oh, it was a metronome that won. That should be fun. Anyway, this is... Uh, a side game, Pokemon Ash Gray is what we're playing right now. If you input in the chat, you have a chance to win a token. Maybe more than one. Here we go. We got a metronome battle. The normal metronome battle happens every t every top of the hour on that Twitch plays Pokemon. Leading off, if we got Surviper with Shetsky and the Pomac Berry, we got Electrode with Soundproof and the Sugar Berry, and we got Mr. Mon with Technician and the Raputa Berry. And over on the red corner, we've got Raichu, we've got Duck Trio, we've got Maywile. And look at their abilities, their items are all unique, but as far as their moves, it's all metronome. So, largely an RNG based match. I'm, I'm sure that most of you guys are. Are familiar with it. Thank you with the uh, combined bitters on that one, by the way. Really wanted to get a metronome, a fun match for the commentators. So I thank all three of you guys there. Maywy. That's always how I've said it. Uh, anyway, a, a couple of things that you do want to look out for in these matches are uh, the abilities. Actually, it's kind of interesting how you got shed skin going against how you got shed skin going against static. So even if the viper was paralyzed, it could possibly heal itself. And that shed skin does also come to play for other status elements too. That's true. Any status element, I believe, is a thirty percent chance of it healing itself each on, turn. On the, at, the, at the end of the turn, yes. Hello, Ferromora. Ferromora. I, I hope I pronounced that right. Mr. Mom comes with a technician, which means any attacks, 60 base power or lower does get doubled. And that is a really good ability to have in Metronome because you're uh, a good percentage of these moves are 60 or base, 60 power or lower. So all of those are powered up. While for the other Pokemon. They just come off as weak moves most of the time. So, we got about 35 seconds left. Looks like the blue team is the underdog, but this is a metronome match, which means the RNG can go anywhere. <laughs> Thank you, Sin. Thank you for backing up my pronunciation there. I've always said Maywile. 
Is it, it, it's Mawile, is, is it? It is I always, much... I always heard it as Mawile. I guess it is Mawile. Um, okay, I'll give it a shot. Uh, Zawasculin? Zawasculin. And here we go. Ooh, odds are almost even. That's right. You don't see that too often at a metronome match. But I wasn't fitting this one. I probably would have shifted it one way or the other. So here we go, Lee. Now we got the Viper versus Raichu. It's the mouse versus the snake right away. And Raichu will attack first. Raichu's gonna go for that nature power. It's gonna turn into Sea Bob thanks to that berry. Well, usually around here you see the nature power turns into Tri Attack, but not at this Coliseum. And in fact, Tri Attack would have been better. That's neat. I right, got my moves mixed up, I believe. Survivor's gonna use the Rock Climb, meanwhile. And that's gonna do more damage than the other attack. So both sides start off with a hit, but nothing too major has happened yet. Chet may not be surprised I already messing up moves the first move it uses, and Raichu's gonna go for the Power Swap. Also, that's an uh, interesting observation is that when a Pokemon uses Nature Power and Metronome, they are using three moves, basically. So Viper is gonna go for the Steel Wing. It's not very effective and very light hit on the Raichu. But that's gonna rise to Viper's defense. And Raichu Stags comes to effect as it paralyzes the Viper. I was wondering how many times it was gonna be able to keep hitting Raichu with physical attacks before it got paralyzed, but remember, it's got the shed skin. And Raichu's gonna go for the Octazooka. That's gonna lower Survivor's accuracy a bit. Oh no, it doesn't. Survivor's gonna go for the Metronome instead. It's going for Super Fang. And yeah, very light hit. Super Fang always does exactly half damage, so right there did a quarter. Also, uh, Shed Skin has healed Survivor's paralysis. It's gotten pretty good RNG so far, I must say. Raichu goes for the defend order. That's gonna rise Raichu's defense. But will it matter with its health so low? To Viper goes for Leech Life. Gonna do some light damage and Survivor's gonna get a bit of HP back. Looks like that defense actually did appear to matter there. So far it is the Viper, uh, mainly winning right now, but you know, we still got two Pokemon left on either side, so there's a lot of time for things to change. And here comes the Rolling Cake, it's not very effective, as it's pretty much a very light hit on the Survivor. Survivor goes for the Metronome. It turns to Mud Shot by the attack, but the Berry from Raichu is going to weaken the power of that attack. But it's a critical hit, so that doesn't matter as Raichu goes down. The first super effective move we've seen all match, and it takes out Raichu to give the blue team the lead. Here Dug comes Doug Trio. And Doug Trio is going to use Metronome to try to get things back on the right side for the red team. Uh, Dugtree is going to set up the light screen. That's going to raise the team's special defenses for, the few, for a few turns. Survivor goes for the book up. That's going to raise Survivor's attack. And mm -hmm. defense. So Survivor being very tactical right now. And Dugtrio will once again go for Metronome. I mean, what else? And oh, it's, it's going for the Frenzy Plant! Um, but it's not very effective. That's gonna ch cost them to you a turn. So Viper has tanked a lot of hits so far, and it's gonna continue to set up. So Viper's just going for the straight up sweep right now. So Viper's gonna get that free turn. As Duck Tree is gonna have to recharge. Let's see what it does on the free turn. 
Oh, it's gonna use Water Pulse, that's gonna be super effective. But the trio does survive. With all that set up, it's able to get off a pretty nice hit there. Oh, here comes that Gastro Acid, that's gonna suppress Survivor's ability. Shed Skin will no longer work, so if Survivor's hit with a Status Affliction now, it will not be able to overcome it. And Survivor uses Focus Miss in Misses. Focus Miss, that's why they call it that. You cannot rely on it for anything. Here comes Ancient Power from Dark Trio. Dark Trio does not get the boosts from Ancient Power. No rainbow boost this time. Uh, Survivor's gonna go for the Bone Rush. Only hits and twice though. It's a low roll that time around, but that Barry's gonna come to effect. It's gonna raise Duck Trio's special attack. But Light Screen has worn off. I actually just realized, I was wondering why that uh, Water Pulse didn't do more after it was boosted by Nasty Plot. But that's right, the Light Screen saved it. Uh, here comes Aqua Tail, and that's going to finish off Survivor. And that Survivor is finally down. The red team trying to hang in there, but with the white screen gone, this Doug Trio and the Mawile are going to need to pull off uh, a very good sequence of moves. Or the blue team will just have to be really bad. That could happen also. But this is a metronome battle, so anything can happen. PPP Sim sub emotes are not stupid. Electros goes for the horn attack. That's gonna finish off Doug Trio. And for Electro, the horn attack is the exact same as Headbutt. But that's pretty much all of Electro's physical attacks must be the same. Uh, the blue corner has a 2 to 1 advantage. They must be feeling pretty good about that 200 104% payout. But my wild does have a lot of resistances, so it could be tough to take down. Electro opens up another metronome and becomes rap. It's a critical hit, but it's still a very light hit. However, my wild will now take a little bit of damage at the end of each turn. Here comes Mama's gonna use faint attack. Not a stab move, even though it looks like it could be a part dark type, it's not. It so does a does... little bit of damage. Yeah, takes a little chip damage from that wrap. Oh, so this is a very fitting song for Waterfall Coliseum, I must point out. Oh, Electro's gonna go for the payback. But Mawal does take another light hit as it resists that move. That's what I was saying about Steel. Back in Gen 4, it resisted all of these things, like Dark and Ghost. It doesn't resist anymore. Ah, Bottle uses the Nightshade, and Electro's gonna take 100 damage. Exactly 100 damage. It's usually a pretty safe move to use in Metronome. If you can get it off, that is. Oh, Electro uses Recover! Oh. It's almost back to full HP. <laughs> That's just gonna make things that much harder for the red team now. Mawa goes for the Aqua Jet, and it doesn't do that much damage. I don't think I've seen one attack from the red corner all game that's done more than like a quarter damage. I think the Nightshade is the best one. Ooh, Electra's gonna use Double Edge. Maul is gonna resist it. it. Does take a little bit more damage, but that recoil. But Electra's gonna take a recoil. It's a very light hit on that recoil too. At this point, we're just waiting for a big hit. It could come from either side, and it's gonna be a psycho boost. Look at this. Oh, Electra barely survives, and Maul's special attack is gonna harshly fall. So if my wild can get Electro to go down, it's one hit away, we can set up a one-on-one, -on -one and then we can see anything. Electro's gonna go for the air cutter, Mama's gonna take a critical hit, but it's still gonna resist it, it's gonna do very light damage. A little better luck with a special attack, but not by much, and now my wild responds with Cross Chop. 
And with that, Electro goes down. And now Bell's corners are down to the last Pokemon, but Mawal still has a lot of damage taken, so the blue team does have a good advantage here. Give the red corner credit for hanging in there, but will they be able to come back with both their HP low and their special attack low on this Mawile? Mr. Mom's gonna go for the Ominous Wind. It's not very effective. And no Rainbow Boost either. Mama goes for the Embargo. That's gonna prevent Mr. Mime from using items. Do not remember which berry Mr. Mime was holding, but all of these berries come in handy, so that may hurt it. Mr. Mime goes for the Miracle Eye. I don't believe that's gonna have any effect on a non-ghost or dark type. Oh, my wall uses recover! And that oh. is a huge move. Everything is different now. The red team definitely has a chance. With that, one, one move, red team's odds has drastically improved. Mr. Mime's gonna go for the agility. That's gonna raise its speed, but it's not really gonna be a useful move as it's already faster than my wall. It could matter if uh, it gets paralyzed, but well, we'll see. Mama goes for the ice shard. So at the moment, both corners are almost even for the first time since really the start of this battle. Here comes and... another metronome from Mr. Mime. It becomes Stun Spore, but the attack misses. And a blue corner. And uh, this, this Mr. Mime has just not been able to do much right. Mawa gets off a of brine and does a bit somewhat damage, and for the first time, looks like the red team does have a, de a slight lead. We do, but remember that brine did not do much with its special attack still down from that psycho boost. Uh oh, Mr. Mime's gonna use a double kick, and it's super effective, and Mawa is down to critical health. Well, I think it's safe to say at this point, without that recover, this thing would be over. But the red team may have a small chance. Gonna go for the aerial ace. And Mr. Mom is about down to about half health, and now Mr. Mom can use its items again. All right, both teams now under a hundred HP total. The match could end on this turn. Mr. Mom's gonna go for the Silver Wind. It's not very effective, but it's good enough to take down Maywall. And the blue team does end up getting the victory. Mr. Mime able to do just enough. And the red team, you guys were teased, I feel for you. Because it looked like you couldn't win. And then maybe it looked like, you know, it was just going to be meant to be. But no, it was the blue team. Blue team gets that 4% payout. <laughs> Well, 104%, but 4% profit. <laughs> did, I yeah, say, so. did I say Maywile again? That's, that's always how I've said it, man. I, I can't believe I've never been called out for that. That was a very good match. Oh, looks like the top red went all in and lost that 10k Pokedongers. Meanwhile, Ooh. Ash Gray. Stuff is happening. We've got 360 Poké Dollars for winning the battle. Also, because I saw it mentioned in chat earlier, uh, there will be Faithful Force commentary after our ship, so you do not want to miss that. Reminder that you really help TPP 